Three things I learned from this weekend's game. Let's get into it. So there's going to be a new video that I do, a new series that I'm doing every week. It's going to be a number of things I've learned um, from this weekend's game. And this week, it's three things. Next week, it might be five things, depending on what goes on. But the first thing I learned from the game against the Giants, Hunter and Hunted. We are going to be hunted all season. Now, um, you know, that comes just with the territory of winning a premiership, uh, everybody sort of uh, getting better. And I think that um, the Giants absolutely had a point to prove. And they came out and they out hunted us. And if you kind of look at this, like looking stats wise, yes, we won sort of tackle count and, and inside forward 50 tackles. And, and that would technically mean that we out hunted them, but just means that they had the ball more than us and, and we had to we had to tackle them and, and try and cause turnovers and stuff like that. But this season, everyone is going to be hunting us. And that's and that's sort of fair enough. Like I said, it comes with the territory of being of being premiers. They dissect your game plan. They look at how you played last season. They try and, you know, teams try and pick little things that you've done um, that they can implement. And they'll look at things that um, will stop you from sort of uh, playing your game. And, and we saw that with, with the Giants. They were stopping our run. They were getting us on the turnover. Um, their forwards had an acre of space. And I say this is one of the things I learned because you know, Hunter versus Hunted, um, a, a few months ago, I want to say, and I think I posted about it on Instagram, was Braden Maynard was asked the question, he goes, you know, how does it feel being the Hunted or, or going to be the Hunted this season? Um, and he said something like, and it really, you know, stuck with me. He said he said something like, um, why do we have to be the, the Hunted? Why can't we be the Hunter? And I like that. I like that quote. You know, to me, it sort of sort of reads like, why do teams have to come for us? We can go for teams um, as well. And that's an awesome mentality to have. That And that, that sort of mentality and what we've been seeing over the preseason is why, you know, one, we're in the position that we're in, um, Premiers, but two, why I'm not taking too much out of this um, game against the Giants. Yes, they outplayed us, but I think we're still on the right track. It's, it's one game. It's round zero. It doesn't really bloody count. Um... But yeah, I think the teams, and I, I guess we weren't ready for it. Um, you know, uh, Giants were premiership favorites. Oh, no, sorry. One of the premiership favorites. Giants were favorites for that game. They were like, I don't like talking about odds too much, but like they were at dollar seventy. we were like 230 or something like that. Um, you know, they had arguably, they're a really good team. Uh, like on, on like their best sort of 23, maybe I want to say. Um and, and a couple of other factors, and, and the prelim lost by a point, right? Um, so they definitely had a point to prove, and yeah, they out-hunted us, and we need to be prepared for this for the rest of the season. The second thing that I learned is that we still don't have a forward line. Now, yes, we won the premiership last year with the forward line that we had, but Dan McStay going out of the team with an ACL is the biggest loss that we've had in a very, very, very long time. I know we won the premiership without him, but we don't get to the grand final without Dan McStay there. Ash Johnson, I don't have the stats on me. I usually write this stuff down, but I don't have the stats on me. Ash Johnson did go missing. Um, I, I would, I would say I can't. I don't know how many shots a goal he had, if he had any or any marks. I wish I did a little bit more research before jumping on and, and telling you my thoughts. But um, Ash Johnson, I thought it was his spot to sort of lose, and. Ash Johnson can be absolutely anything, right? He's not going to be a um, Dan McStay replacement. We, we know that. Um, but he can be absolutely anything. He just, I don't know. I don't know what he needs to apply himself more. He came back looking fitter. He, he was absolutely smashing in a preseason. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was our, um, you know, kicking it inside the 450. Some of it was that. We were bombing it inside 450, not giving any of our forwards real chances. Um, so he didn't get a lot of the ball. I don't think Reef McGuinness is the answer either. Yes, I, I want Reef in the team, and I think he's he's going to be a, a really good forward. Um, but he's not a Dan McStay replacement answer. Uh, we don't really have an answer for it. It could have been Nathan Kruger, sort of same height, same weight. I, I think, I think it might be, I think it might be Billy Frampton. Of honestly. Um, we saw what he did in the grand final, right? Playing that defensive forward role, nearly took a couple of marks. But Frampton, when he goes down forward, he Anzac Day he kicked that goal in the in the fourth quarter. I think he kicked a goal against um, Adelaide as well when they were getting a bit of a run on it. Uh, 
has kicked a cu- he's kicked a couple of goals here and there, but he can take a really good mark and can kick and can kick a goal, which is which is good. Um, he's a big body. I think he's a little bit too slow for for the uh, defense line. And in saying that, we probably needed him um, as a defender um, against Hogan and stuff like that. But I, I think why not just chuck him in the forward line? Um, who do we have this week? Sydney. Um, yeah, because I, I don't think I don't think. Ash Johnson and Ruth McGuinness are going to be the answer. Just based on that one game and what I've seen on preseason training. Like I said, a huge fan of Ash Johnson. I just, he, if he's, I don't think he stays in the team against Sydney, but if he does, he's going to want to kick three or four goals to um, uh, absolutely just, you know, cement that spot. But I, I think give give Billy Frampton a try and change those magnets around because if, if Frampton doesn't mark it or if Mychek doesn't mark it, you've got Lockie Schultz, Jamie Elliott, Bo McCreary, Bobby Hill all roaming around um, and sort of, um, you know, wanting that wanting that crumb and, and Billy Frampton, Mychek bring the ball down to ground. Mason Cox brings the ball down to ground um, and you can go sort of that way. Um, but that forward line just, just didn't work. And like I said, in part, of that forward line not working was that our uh, efficiency inside the forward 50 wasn't that good. Our, our balls going into the forward 50 wasn't that good. Like Craig McRae said after his presence, they were kicking it long and they weren't, um, they were, the forwards weren't prepared for it. It was just coming back out. It was that repeat inside 50 entries, but it was just to, to no avail. It was just shitty repeat inside 50 entries. The third and final thing that I learned from this weekend's game was opening round was a success and it was an excess, in my opinion. I love that the footy started um, early because we always want more footy. I I really like that they're trying to get into, and I've said this before, they're trying to get into the New South Wales market more, the Queensland market more, uh, which is good. You you know you bring your bring your main big teams up there, and they I think they all sold out, and we all got really good games. You know, um, the the Sydney Melbourne game was good. The Carlton. Uh, Brisbane game was was phenomenal. Uh, you know, Brisbane giving up an eight goal lead and, and Carlton's comeback and that Harry Mackay story was or McKay was was awesome as well for him to kick that goal. Uh, Gold Coast absolutely smashing the Tigers and then the Giants, you know, getting one um, over on us, which is fair enough. Um, so there were four really good games, but I went to and I said this in the review. So I went to um, a bar, Pink Lemonade, with some friends to watch the game, and. The atmosphere was just dead. That's usually popping on away games, but it was dead. And I think I put that down to no one really caring about opening round. My dad thought it was a practice match still. He goes, oh, did that count? I'm like, yeah, it's like, I know it's round zero, but it still counted. So I don't think anyone really grasped the concept. Or not, a lot of people didn't grasp the concept. They just weren't on board with it. Um, and the other thing, and it's been reported so many times, was that this was supposed to be when the NRL was in Las Vegas or, or whatever it may have been. Um, but, uh, at Las Vegas, yeah, Las Vegas, uh, but they were there last week playing. So now they were back. There was a couple of games on this weekend there. And then on the Sunday, which was yesterday, there was an NRL game. I'm pretty sure it was in Sydney. Um, and they had all the market there for that Sunday game or wherever it sort of was in that Sydney or Queensland region. Whereas they should have, if they wanted to do an opening round, why didn't they just do Friday, Saturday, sorry, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then a Sunday 3.30 game, 10 past 2 game on, on the sort of Sunday because um, it's a public holiday. Oh, so I guess it's only public holiday in Victoria. But they should have just done a Sunday game to if they're going to stay there the whole week and spread it out a little bit instead of two games on um, the Saturday. But I think, it was a, I think it was a success with, you know, selling out and stuff like that, getting the comps um, started early. But I think it wasn't a success just due to the fact that you know, it wasn't um, as big in Victoria as as an opening game was. When Carlton played Richmond on Thursday night, and Carlton got to absolutely smash Richmond, um, that's going to be big. That's going to be really big. There's going to be 90,000 people at the MCG, and, and that's when people are going to say, oh, footy's finally started. Because for the 10 other teams, the game hasn't, or the, their competition hasn't even started yet. So um, you can see why it's a little bit 50 50. I do like the idea. I just think it could be done better. You know, could we do gather around in Sydney and then this like for one year, let's just say gather around in Sydney this year and then gather around in um, Bris Vegas the next year and then just sort of rotate that instead of Adelaide because Adelaide have got a big footy population, you know? So um, I mean, I'm, I don't know, these, these fixturings and, and what they do is, is just crazy. But yeah, I think it was, it was a 50-50 for me. Um, 
I do like that my team played, um, which is always good. But uh, yeah, bit of a 50-50 for me. But anyway, these are my three things that I learned from the weekend's game. Let me know your thoughts down below. What did you learn? Uh, what kind of lessons was going on? But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, single striker. I'll sweep you later.